everybody. Welcome back to the Lake Effect Garden. I know it's been a while. Well, it's been like a week. Well, it's been more than a week, probably. I kind of did that stopgap video of, you know, the progression of my garden. And that kind of filled in the gaps when it came to having a project to actually film for you guys. So, um... And then for the rest of the time, I've basically been doing nothing but really like small maintenance things here and there. Stuff that we all know how to do. Stuff that I didn't want to bore the bajiggers out of you with. So, you know, weeding. I would never make a video for weeding, I'm sorry. Um, strimming and weed whacking and mowing and things like that just to clean everything up. And that's basically what I've been doing. I did some more tying up of my tomatoes and my cucumbers because they're really taking off. So just little piddly things like that. And we've had some rain. We've had a really decent amount of rain and the weather has cooled down quite a bit. But today, I guess, proves to be another scorcher. I can hear the bugs out already. And usually when the cicadas are out like this early, and this is early, this is, I mean, not even nine o'clock in the morning yet, it means we're gonna have a hot day, so best to get into the job that I'm going to be doing now, especially because the job that I'm taking care of today is going to be in the tunnel, okay? So this is Tunnel Tales Part 2, and what's going to be happening here is I'm going to be filling up my grow bags with compost, and then I'm going to be planting in just a couple of the things that I had put aside for that. So my tomatoes, first of all, have put on so much root growth, like they cannot, they need to get out. They need to get out of those jars and they need to get into some soil. And then probably my cucumbers, because those also need to get out and they need to get on growing. Now, when it comes to all the seeds that I sowed, the lettuces and the brassicas and the various greens and roots and whatnot, um, with the rain that we had last weekend, <laughs> I didn't really get a chance to come out into the garden. All I was thinking to myself was, oh, this is fabulous. You know, my garden's finally getting the drink that it deserves. It's not coming from the tap. You know what I mean? So I just kind of didn't come back here. I knew it was going to be a little soupy. I was just like, let nature take its course. I'm sure that all of my plants are just living their best life right now. So the rain ended. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to go open up my shed and air it out because it had been really hot, making sure that there's no snakes or any other vermin that are decided to take up residence. So I went over to my little seed table, seedling table, to find that my lovely roasting pans, my aluminum slash aluminum pans, had completely filled up to the top with water. So it seems that my seedlings were taking a little bath. So I quickly got all of them out, quickly. It was kind of funny because I didn't have any room and I kept moving things around the table like a chessboard to make everything fit. And <laughs> I got them out, got all the water drained out, just let them sit for a little bit to drain and then I put them back in the pan. Now, luckily, I think, I think they'll be okay. I think they will. I'm, I'm, I'm still, there's still a couple of that, you know, still a couple of seedlings that look like they're, they've been, you know, run over by a, a steamroller, but I'm hoping that they'll bounce back. I am not going to plant those in today. I'm just going to kind of let them do their thing. They're still kind of small and tiddly, um, and I don't want to foresee itch issue. I've actually given them quite a bit of stress with this rain, so I don't want to stress them anymore. I mean, worse comes to worse, they're fall crops, I could re-sow them if I wanted to, but, you know, who wants to do that? So they're going to stay in their pots and grow on a little bit longer, and I will be switching them out into the bottomless trays that I had them in. They don't need to be in those roasting pans anymore. But, yes, so tomatoes. So we're going to be putting the tomatoes in the grow bags, and I'm also going to be potting a few up. I know that my father wants some of the plants um, his, his interest was piqued over the Porter brand because of the amount of suckers I got off of it and because, you know, I mean, the stems are ridiculous on it. They're huge and they're prolific. 
prolific as the day is long. I can't believe how many tomatoes I have on that variety. And this is my first year growing it, so <laughs> note to self. Of course, they could end up tasting terrible. Anyways, they won't. So I'm going to pot those tomatoes up. I'm going to put some in the grow bags. I've got my cucumbers. I'm going to have to build a trellis for them. And then I have some extra zucchini and yellow squash. So courgettes, which I don't know what's been going on in my squash bed, but, um, well, I don't know what's been going on in my garden. I've had a critter, a very large critter, coming through and digging things up. Like, by the root ball, digging things up. They haven't eaten any of the plants, so I'm thinking, a deer? No, can't be a deer. A skunk? A raccoon? A mutant-sized rabbit? I have no idea. The only reason I said deer to begin with is because, remember how I told you I don't get deer in my backyard? Well, stupid me left the gate open next to the garage and I was out cutting grass the other day and I found, well, I left the, the, the calling card, the deer's calling card, a large pile of it in my yard. So who knows? But anyways, I've got these summer squash plants that I'm going to put in the bags and by golly, I really, really hope that I get some plant, I get some uh, fruit off of them. I'm seeing all these pictures coming in on Facebook and I'm just drooling. So Fingers crossed with that. Okay, enough of my prattling on. I'm going to um, now take you over down to the tunnel and we're gonna start to fill the bags. And I have nine bags of compost and those are, each bag has a one and a half cubic yards. No, that's not right. One and a half cubic something. <laughs> All I know is that one bag of this stuff fills a grow bag. Sorry, I'll, I'll confirm that with you when we start filling them up. And incidentally, I'm using the same stuff that I used to build my raised bed, the little oval-shaped one. It seems to be doing really well. My plants are actually really loving that particular soil blend. Even though it stinks to high heaven, I had to drive back to my house with all of my windows open because it smelled like a stable. Um, <clears throat> but it works, so I'm thrilled. All right. Let's go over to the tunnel, guys. All right, here we are at the tunnel. So you can see that I have nine grow bags here. Okay. For the nine bags of compost that I did purchase. And... One point five cubic feet. That's exactly what I was trying to remember. Cubic yards. That would have been quite a bit. Anyhow, so here we are, nine bags of, or sorry, nine grow bags, and I already made it a point to fill one of them up, okay? I actually did this yesterday because I wanted to see, you know, how much one bag of compost would, you know, how it would fill the grow bag. So um, then I went out this morning and I grabbed eight more. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to fill these up one by one. And then we will start to plant them in. Now, these may not be the final resting place for these bags. I haven't decided that. But I do know that I want this whole side to be, to have the tomatoes. Because I'm going to, I'm going to string them up <coughs> to that bar using string. Instead of using poles. Because I'm pretty much out of poles. I mean, I have some randos that I'm going to use for my cucumber trellising. But um, I'm just going to use the string and, and do it that way. Never done it before, so... You know, this will this whole this whole project really is a trial for me. So, <clears throat> so um, yeah. So I've got the nine here. I may space them out differently, but then I've got all this space over here, and I have seven more bags that I will use for my brassicas and my greens. So let's fill these bags up. Okay, they are all filled up. One bag per bag. And 
I, it does smell like a farm in here. <laughs> Once you get used to it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's not so bad. So, um, I'm going to now take out my tomatoes. I'm gonna show you what those look like and then I'm gonna plant those in first, okay? So here we go. Okay, it's already a bazillion degrees in here. <laughs> I thought that I could avoid it by maybe getting out here a little bit on the early side. Guess again. So I'm gonna show you the tomatoes that I had rooted on. And then what I'm going to do is, I've got my jute twine here and I'm going to bury the twine with the tomato plant, okay? I'm gonna bury it inside of the basket and then I'm gonna run it up, okay? And there is gonna be a bit of an angle, but I, I don't mind that. It's gonna, it's gonna kind of create this cathedral effect, if I may. So I'm gonna bury this in. I'll do a light tie at the bottom, the base of the plant, and then I'm gonna plant it in really, really deep, okay? And then run it to the top. So, um, so here we have <laughs> the porter variety. Okay, so let me, let me just give you an idea of what the root growth is like. I'm gonna pull these out. I think because they were so wedged in there that, um, whatchamacallit, the roots were kind of, uh, they were kind of trimmed in, in a way. They couldn't grow out very much, but you can see that there's quite a bit of root growth on these, okay? And I have eight of these cuttings that I took, okay? And I'm gonna plant in, let's see, I've got four varieties. I think I'll put maybe two in this bag and then two in this bag, and then I'll pot up the rest and give them away, okay? So those are the porter varieties. Then I have over here, this is the Sweetie, my favorite, okay? This also has put on quite a bit of root growth. Let me see, can you see that? Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna leave those in water. And then I have the Consoluto Genovese. And these, look at these. Holy schmoly, right? There's only two of those, okay? So those will get their own bag. And then I had only two cuttings of the beef steak and one did a really, really great job. The other one kind of fizzled out, so. You can see how much root growth is on that. So, that's okay. I can still make tomato sandwiches with any kind of tomato. It's just the beef steak is, you know, it's the perfect bread size, so it's more convenient. I'm doing it out of convenience. So, anyways, okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and start planting these in. I'm gonna start running up my jute twine. Yes, jute twine, because it does decompose. Okay, and, and then when we're done with that, we will kind of change gears and we will head towards the summer squash. Okay, I've got these bad boys planted in. And I've got my jute twine running all the way up to the top. I made sure that I knotted it so they don't move, but I have them evenly spaced and I have them spaced bigger than I normally would 
outside in the garden only because I know with this polytunnel, even though there are vents located on the side, that the circulation in here when it comes to um, moving air is just not as good as it is out in the garden. So just to prevent anything that might, I don't know, happen, might, rhymes with another word that I've never experienced with my tomatoes, but I'm not gonna say anything as to jinx myself. So here's my one beef steak. It gets its own little bag, the little greedy guts that it is, but they grow pretty big, so I don't need it. And these are my two sweeties that they are. I planted them extra deep so they can really get a firm established root system growing. And then over here I have the two Consoluto Genovese, so much fun to say. And then I have four of the Porter varieties. So I'm going to plant up the rest in pots and then I'm going to give those to my father and to other people who may want them. So now we're going to head over to this bed, this bed, <laughs> this bag, okay these two bags and I have one yellow squash plant that is aching to get out of its pot and then one smaller sorry I was just wiping sweat off my face it is really hot in here um, one smaller green zucchini the black beauty variety aka courgette which is so much more fun to say than zucchini but never mind um, so that's what we're gonna do next okay I'm going to be all hunchback of Notre Dame as I do this because, um, sorry, Notre Dame, um, just so that I can fit everything into the shot. So here's a grow bag and here is the last hope for the summer squash. This is the black beauty zucchini. You can see there's a bit of a root system coming out. I'm very happy about that. It means it's ready and it's healthy. So I'm going to take my label and I'm going to stick it in. Okay. And then I'm going to plant this in. I'm going to make sure that this is really well firmed before I do that. The soil came out of the bag really nice and moist, so I'm pleased about that. All right, let's tip this one out. Now, <laughs> there were four seeds planted and only one came up. So, I don't know, I might want to switch the, the, uh, the company that I buy my zucchini seeds from. I'm not going to say who. I usually have really, really good germination with this particular uh, company but um, for some reason this batch of zucchini seeds have been just temperamental little brats they just won't germinate for me oh well I got the one so I'm gonna plant that in I heard um, I heard you guys were having over in the UK we're having an issue with zucchini plants zucchini seeds that you may have purchased that um, once grown and harvested and eaten could make you sick. I've never heard of such a thing, ever. How does that work? I mean, I mean that's genetics for you, I guess, right? Hmm. I wonder what variety it was. I really, I mean, I just kept seeing um, on the various pages that I follow, like Allotment Life and Planet Vegetaria by Richard and Paul. Um, where people were posting it and I mean the company that sells you those seeds they don't exist in America <laughs> um, so I guess the risk of, of any of us falling prey to that um, would be slim to none but um, you know I'd be interested to see if it were like an F1 hybrid or perhaps um, an heirloom variety okay Never mind. Oh, please do your thing. Okay. And this is the yellow straight neck squash. And I have three of these. So I'm going to pack them in here. I'm probably not, should not be doing that, but you know, space is limited and I've got a finite amount of these grow bags. So you know what? There's two larger ones and then one tiddly one. So I think I'm gonna plant the two larger ones in the bag and then I'm gonna grow on this little tiddly one and maybe stick it somewhere else in the garden where it might be a little bit more successful. Okay, here we go. Well, I'm gonna take the label out first. No, I'm not actually. I'm gonna save it because then I'm gonna come back to this little seedling and be like, what are you again? Okay, yeah, really nice root system. It's very happy. Ooh. 
am sweating like a you know what and you know where. <sighs> okay, there's one. Make sure that there's enough space between the two of them. And the second one, I'm just gonna kind of contort myself. I'll pay for this later. <sighs> Okay. I mean, I'm seriously right now to the point where I, I would like to go into my house, grab one of my sage smudges and like purify this area and say some kind of chance to make these be successful for me because I am that desperate to get some fresh zucchini and squash this summer. Okay. I would really appreciate any prayers you would like to send over the ocean or across the country to help me in this. Okay. Fabulous. All right, now there's two more grow bags that are right behind me. I'm gonna move the camera. I'm gonna wipe off the sweat. And then we're going to plant in the cucumbers. Okay, new angle. Here we are. These are the last two grow bags. Bags. I'm just making sure that they are firm and comfy. Now check this out. Woohoo! 100% germination. All the seeds that I sown, they came up. So I'm over the moon. Okay, just as a reminder, this variety is the long green improved. Okay, and then this one is the, I think I called it the delicatesse, but I think in German it would really be delicatesse. Okay, delicat meaning delicate and esse meaning eaten. Eating, sorry, eating. That's like if you go to a delicatessen, that word is really, I think it translates to delicate eating. So I hope so. I want to do a lot of delicate eating this year. So I'm going to put the delicate eating here, the delicatessa, and then I'm going to put the long green improved in here. Okay, I'm going to get these in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build some trellising out of whatever I got left over in the little blue barn. Could be all sorts of shapes and sizes. Okay, label in. Let's dump these babies out. And then it's just a matter of separating them. Oh yeah, look at that, fabuloso. I love it. And I'm gonna do these kind of in a circular shape. They'll eventually want to climb up against each other. They're going to they're going to wind their way up. It's kind of like a cooperation type of deal, okay? They're all going to want to go up the trellis or at least I'm going to hope hope they do. I'm going to train them to do so. But we're going to uh, put the trellising behind them and then I will train each of the plants to kind of grow upon itself. and then hopefully up the trellis. I'm doing this against the back of the polytunnel. Ugh, there we go. I'm doing it up against the back of the polytunnel because it's flat and there's no door. So that way I can actually rest a trellising up here and maybe tie it in. And I don't have to worry about, you know, it tipping over or anything like that, hopefully. All right, and now, this is a delicate eating. Let's tip these bad boys out. Everybody looking really happy. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous root systems on these. Woo! Okay, I'm gonna put this big mamacita in the back. I'm really giving them a good firming in. Like I said, the soil came out of the bag pretty moist. So I'm pleased about that. Um, but I do have to give these in a, a really, really good watering in. Ugh. Alrighty. Yay, I'm so excited about this. Cucumbers, I hope they come to something. Okay, so now I'm going to build trellising for this and 
If you want to grab yourself a cup of tea, I'm going to definitely put this on the fast forward mode just so you can see kind of what I'm dealing with. Um, I don't know what fun tune I'm going to put along with this, but I'm sure it will be fun. And, and then uh, I will show you the tunnel in its entirety when I'm all done. See what everything that I got planted in and then we'll go from there. Okay, here we go. Okay, all done. Oh my gosh, I am just sweating buckets in here. So it looks a little Blair Witch Project, I'm not gonna lie, but it'll hopefully do the job. And it's basically, I had a couple of pieces of old trellising that kind of fell apart. That's the thicker wood. Okay, and then I actually did have three bamboo canes left that I found kind of hiding. So I used those and then the rest is jute twine. So I hope these cucumbers are realized, I mean, how much work went into this and they they uh they do their thing all right <laughs> so yeah there we have it so everything is planted in now for now i should say so we've got our two yellow straight neck squash our black beauty zucchini our what is that I think the heat's getting to me. I can't concentrate. Um, the beefsteak tomato. We have two of the sweetie. We have two of the consoluto genovese. And then four of the porter variety. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'm gonna just going to do this off camera because you guys have already seen me transplanting, but I'm going to get those, the rest of those tomatoes, tomato plants um, taken care of and into pots so that I can give them away. And then I'm going to give these a watering in. So what I do want to show you though, sorry that I was wiping more sweat off of me. I'm disgusting right now. Um, what I do want to show you is how I water my garden. This is something that I haven't really talked about. So let's go over through the garden and I'm going to show you that. Okay. Oh, the shade feels wonderful. So I have a hose that runs from the side of my house all the way back here. And then um, I bought this, oh, this was a while ago. Um, it's kind of like a hose slash hose holder stake thingy. And so <clears throat> I, um, I put a splitter on it and then I actually put a couple of timers okay these are sprinkler timers and I have them I've got this one over here on the left has two okay two spigots and then this one on the right has just the one so they all go off in succession so the first hose all the way to the left goes for my brassica bed and then once that time ends the next one engages and that is for my tomatoes and corns and cucumber beds okay 
and then when that goes off this one comes on and this one is for this part of my garden closest to the garage and I make sure that this is done very very early in the morning so uh, I think the brassica bed starts at like I don't know four o'clock in the morning and then by the time I am done drinking my tea and starting to actually you know <laughs> function in the world but by the time I come back here it's uh, usually done so yeah look at my cucumbers they are racing to the top I've had a couple already um, and th they were pretty pretty delicious and if some of you have seen my Instagram or my Facebook page you saw that I also did some harvesting of my uh, Blue Lake bush beans and I brought those I had a couple myself they were absolutely delectable but there's a new flush that's gonna, gonna be starting pretty soon and I want to get the old one out so that I can get more flowers but that batch went to my parents house along with a posy of flowers that I'm growing, so all sorts of things. All right, I think that's about it for today. Woo-wee! Well, that was, you know what? Despite all the sweat, that was really, I really enjoyed that. I really loved expanding my garden in July, in the middle of July, it's the 15th, and I'm doing more planting in, and that's super exciting to me. I, I'm, yeah, that's a first. It's all a first for me. So everything is watered in. All the rest of the tomato plants are planted in that I need to put in pots. Like I said, I'm going to grow on those brassicas and those greens and whatever, and I'm going to let those grow on a little bit, and then I will put them in the bag. So that will probably be Tunnel Tales Part 3. So, yeah, but that's not going to happen for a little bit. I think the next video that I'm going to make for you guys is going to be about cuttings, okay? So, I have several shrubs here that I feel that I can propagate. I mean, shrubs in America, I, don't, I can't speak for everywhere else, but I know when it comes to buying shrubs, and usually potted ones, they're really expensive. Even bare root shrubs are expensive. And I, I have, I've got a number of shrubs and plants that I would love more of. So I'm gonna do some cuttings. I'm gonna do a cuttings video and several different, I mean, just deciduous shrubs, maybe some of my fruiting shrubs, like my blueberries or my currants, things like that. My elder, uh, my elderberry plants, my trees. I would like a lot more of those. Um, the berries are beginning to form. I'm so excited. And then I've got a pussy willow tree that needs to be coppiced, and I would like to get that rooted as well. And, yeah. So, I think that'll be a really good topic for next time on the next episode here. So, I hope whatever you guys are getting up to, that it's fun and it's enjoyable and you're out in this gorgeous, gorgeous weather. It is so fleeting, it really is, and I'm trying my level best to be outside as often as possible. Whether it's even during a rainstorm and I'm sitting on my little gray bench that I built for my, uh, next to my back door, that's really the key. So that's what we'll do next time, and then I will be taking a little trip. And it just so happens that my birthday is coming up and I will be spending it with some friends um, out of town. So it's going to be another perhaps Lake Effect Gardener on on location type of deal. And maybe it'll just be kind of like a, a, a blog, a vlog of, you know, where I am because I am going to a different part of New York State. So that might be of interest to you to see exactly what the different areas look like. And uh, then I'll be back here and goodness knows I will probably have my work cut out for me trying to play catch up after being away. So <laughs> I'm definitely not going to be um, starving for any type of, of content to be filming for you guys. So as always, that's it for me. I hope you guys are well and I will see you really, really soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.